Reporting from Arkham Asylum, this is Gotham Rogues. In this video we take a look at the comic book storyline Deadshot Beginnings. Deadshot Beginnings is a four-issue miniseries that was published in 1988. It was written by John Strander and Kim Yale and penciled by Luke McDonald. It's a spin-off of Strander and McDonald's popular Suicide Squad series that also ran at the same time and heavily featured Deadshot. In this story we meet Floyd Lawton, aka Deadshot, on yet another mission for the squad. Infiltrate a South American crime organization and take out the leader. Deadshot is doing this one solo. And completes it in his typical unconventional and reckless manner. Back at the squad's headquarters, Bell Rev, Lawton is informed via a letter from his estranged ex-wife that their son has been kidnapped and will be killed unless Deadshot finishes a job he started 20 years ago. Not being good at following orders, Lawton sets out on a brutal killing spree searching for his son. Meanwhile, Floyd's appointed Bell Rev therapist, Marnie Hearst, have developed feelings for him and is determined to cure Lawton of his self-destructive behavior and wicked ways. In order to do that, she needs to get to the root of the problem. Thus, Marnie goes on a quest to learn about Floyd's past. In doing so, she discovers dark secrets and cover-ups within the rich Lawton family that involves a bitter, crippled father, a cruel, conniving, recluse mother, and the murder of Floyd's beloved brother, Edward. We also learn that Deadshot's family and past are somehow connected to the kidnapping of his son. Of course, as usual, I'm not going to spoil anything here. In case some of you haven't read this story, it's a great and well-written mystery tale. It features unpredictable twists and reveals. You can't really call them beforehand, unlike in a lot of other stories of this kind. You kept guessing and at the edge of your seat all the way to the finale. What job did Deadshot not finish 20 years ago? Who took his son? Who crippled Floyd's father and killed his brother? And what part does the mother play in all of this? Now, this is an origin story, but we don't get to see Floyd putting on the Deadshot costume for the first time or witness how he learned to shoot. We get a few single panel flashbacks to his early years and it's interesting that the writers chose to include Deadshot's first appearance from the 50s, the one where he dressed up in tailcoats and wore a top hat. They could have easily skipped that as it doesn't quite fit into the gritty, more realistic tone of late 80s DC comics, especially the Suicide Squad title. DC changed a lot of things after Crisis on Infinite Earths in 1985, including many characters' origins, so Lawton's backstory could have been completely rewritten. I'm both glad and disappointed that it wasn't. Glad because I love old Silver Age comics, so seeing that 50s appearance intact, silly as it may be, is pretty neat. Disappointed because I can't help but wonder what kind of new background Ostrander and Yale might have come up with for Floyd. But anyway, this story's focus is not on how Lawton became Deadshot practically, but how it happened mentally. However, we don't get definitive clear-cut answers there either. Floyd is kind of an enigma, and he himself hints at the fact that he was simply born bad. According to him, there was no big traumatic experience that triggered his homicidal and suicidal tendencies. He was always evil. But is that really true? Marnie Hearst certainly don't want to believe that. Floyd is very stoic and rarely show any actual feelings, not even rage. Yet despite that, he must care about his son. Sure, he wants no part in his life, but the fact that Floyd relentlessly hunts down every single person involved in the kidnapping proves he gives a damn, even though he'd like to pretend otherwise. It was the late 80s Suicide Squad comic that turned Deadshot into a total badass, but it was this miniseries that cemented him as a fascinating character as well. Floyd's big thing is his death wish. He's just waiting for someone to finally put a bullet between his eyes. That's why Lawton wears that bright red costume with a bullseye on the chest. Sure, that concept was introduced earlier, but it was here that it was fully explored and developed for the first time. In fact, it's the entire crux of the story, the big question that's being asked. Why does Floyd want to Die. Again, he himself suggests that he does not value human life at all. Whenever Lawton kills someone, no matter who it is, he feels absolutely nothing. And if you feel that way about life, what's the point of living? But that's a theory. In my opinion, it's too simple of an answer. And he is obviously not completely cold. As here in this comic especially, Floyd clearly has emotions, rare as they may be. Of course, according to Marnie, Lawton's messed up and tragic past did traumatize him. And she firmly believes that there is a way to rehabilitate 
hate him. But that's kind of the beauty of this miniseries. He doesn't spell anything out. You'll have to make up your own mind about what it is that makes Dead Chance tick. Dealing with such a grim subject matter, this comic is extremely bleak and depressing. Sure, it's entertaining in many places, such as Lawton's badass moments. Like when on his mission at the beginning, Lawton finds his target on board a plane. The Mark believes himself to be safe. As no one is stupid enough to fire guns inside an airplane, you get yourself killed as well. And what if a person doesn't care about dying, in fact even kind of wants it? Yeah, never assume anything when Deadshot is around. But besides awesome parts like that, and there are plenty of them, this story overall feels like a punch to the gut. It's relentless and very grey, there's not really a single happy moment in it. So if you're the type of person who wants every story to end with the good guys cheerful and victorious, then stay away from this comic. But if you like darker material, and of course if you're a fan of Deadshot, then this miniseries is a must. I don't really have all that much to say about the artwork. It's pretty basic and nothing special, just like it was in the Suicide Squad series, but it does its job. There are a few panels here and there that I really like though, where McDonald's done some excellent layout choices and used a good perspective. With the angles and the shadows, some parts have a bit of a film noir look to them, which of course fits the bleak story perfectly. So there you have it, that's the comic book storyline Deadshot Beginnings, one of the greatest Deadshot stories ever told. Remember, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.